In the wake of the Rumsfeld Commission report and the North Korean missile launch, Congress passed the National Missile Defense Act of 1999. The law requires the Pentagon to field a limited system as soon as technologically possible. Last October, the design team tested the system's ability to hit a target outside the Earth's atmosphere. Sixteen years after President Reagan first demanded a missile shield, the Star Wars program finally had its first successful intercept. But the October flight test did not proceed as smoothly as it appeared. Due to a software problem, the kill vehicle became temporarily lost as soon as it was released from the missile and was unable to locate its target. Instead, the kill vehicle tracked a large balloon being used as a decoy. When, by chance, the warhead drifted into the kill vehicle's field of vision, the kill vehicle identified and collided with it. The next flight test, in January 2000, failed due to a malfunction in the kill vehicle. With only one flight test remaining before a presidential decision is due, these results leave serious doubt as to whether Star Wars can possibly be proven to work in such a short time. I mean, judging on the basis of the first two intercept tests, we're very early in a very immature program uh, that will not be ready for a deployment decision this summer. Tom Colina is director of the Arms Control and International Security Program at the Union of Concerned Scientists. You know, the first test hit its target, but it did it in a very roundabout way. The second test just flat out missed. And so basically you've got one miss and you've got one test that's very suspicious or, or not well understood. And that's not a basis on which you, you make a deployment decision, clearly. Apart from the mixed results of flight tests so far, the testing program itself is rife with shortcomings. The number of flight tests has been cut dramatically, in part due to each test's $100 million price tag and political pressure to speed up the process. For me, the most important thing is the fact that originally they were going to have 19 of these uh, tests of the National Missile Defense System. And now they're saying they're only going to have three before they go and recommend to the president whether or not the deployment should occur immediately. Bruce Gagnon is coordinator of the Global Network Against Nuclear Power and Weapons in Space. We know that the first test, uh, they've had more trouble with it than they'd like to admit. And now with the second test, uh, they've had a failure. I think this really indicates that they're moving much too quickly. They're trying to push this whole system. Uh, much sooner than they really have it down technologically. Apart from being so few in number, tests of the Star Wars system are far from realistic. None of the flight tests planned for this year will even use the complete system, since several key components haven't been built yet. The booster rocket, which launches the interceptor toward the enemy missile, will not be ready before the year 2001. The $7 billion network of space-based sensors will not be available until at least 2006. When this equipment does become available, it may perform differently than the surrogates now being used in flight tests. The targets being used in the intercept tests are also unrealistic. Thus far, they have been much easier to locate and destroy than real enemy missiles. And if you look at what is the realistic threat coming from, say, a country again like North Korea, we have to assume that if North Korea can put up a long-range missile and put a weapon of mass destruction on it, like a nuclear warhead, they can also do countermeasures. Countermeasures are steps an attacking enemy could take to confuse and defeat missile defenses. When a rocket releases its warhead outside the Earth's atmosphere, additional objects can be released as decoys. In the vacuum of outer space, the decoys will move with about the same speed and direction as the warhead. Let's say you've got 50 balloons up there. And these are mylar balloons, the kind of thing you might buy in the supermarket for a birthday party. And you've got one warhead amongst those 50 balloons. Uh, these balloons are such that radar can't see through them. The infrared sensor can't discriminate which one's got the warhead, which one doesn't. You've got to shoot at them all. 
So we have to assume that's part of the threat, and therefore we have to test a system against those kind of threats, and that's not being done. Since these sorts of countermeasures are available today, by the time the Third World missile threat becomes a reality, the Star Wars system could be obsolete. If Iran, Iraq, or North Korea is intent on threatening the United States, they have the luxury of time to ensure that their missiles can defeat American defenses. Certainly in this case, it's much easier uh, for the offense than the defense. Uh, and the reason is the defense has to be fielded first. And therefore, the offense can respond to that defense, that particular defense, before it attacks. So we put up our defense. Everyone knows, essentially, what it's going to be. Uh, and then an attacker can sit back and say, OK, what are the sensors going to be? What, are the, you know, what is the interceptor going to be able to do? And then plan your attack accordingly. The rush to deploy an untested missile defense system against an unknown threat could leave the United States with a system which affords little protection. Uh, but to us, the real question is not whether that's a threat, but whether this system, the National Missile Defense System as proposed, would be effective against that threat. And, and our answer is no.